Hey there, and welcome to another tutorial and screencast in the ongoing series of Modex video tutorials. And in this screencast, we're going to pick up where we left off. Um, the last screencast, we installed Modex Revolution on MAMP. Um, we did a local host install, created a sandbox Modex Revolution site that we're going to be using to sort of play around and, and learn Modex Revolution and test different things um, in, this, in this series. Um, you can find the last screencast if you need to catch up at modexvideotutorials.com. And if you want to discuss the screencast, this screencast or any other screencast that um, is on this website, uh, just feel free to register a free account at the modexvideotutorials.com slash forums. And you can get there from modexvideotutorials.com by just clicking on any post and clicking on discuss this screencast. All right. So I have MAMP running. And here's the sandbox site. There's nothing in it. If we do a view, it just comes up completely blank. And um, let me just shut down TweetDeck here. Sorry about that. Um, it comes up completely blank. So it's a blank slate ready for us to play with. What I want to do in this screencast is just sort of talk through the back end and just some of the basic things. I can't cover everything. Um, I can, but there would be no point. I think it would be a bit overwhelming, especially if you're completely new to ModX. I'm just going to go over the basics. And as we work through these screencasts and as we learn more and more things about working with ModX Revolution, you will find that you learn more and more about the different parts of the back end and, and how you use them. So basically, here you are in the back end, which you get to by just clicking home. If you're somewhere else, just click home and it brings you to this part. Um, that's just your dashboard. And you have several buttons. Now, if you look over here on the, on the side here, there's the tree, the resource tree, the element tree, and the file tree. And they're just in three tabs. And this will list your contexts and your resources. And your resources are basically documents. Uh, they're basically their documents, their web links, um, their static resources. They're anything that you've added to your site um, that you want to show up on the front end appears as a resource and and this might be a little confusing but if you think about the fact that url which is what you know the technical the technical acronym for um, a link is url that stands for universal um, resource locator i believe it's universal resource locator and and so that's that's where the concept i think that's where the modex team came up with the concept of calling these resources rather than calling them um, documents or pages so they call them resources. And we're going to be doing a lot of, of work here as we build out our site and as, as we create um, the front-facing documents and, and links and stuff that will come from this place. So the, f the first one is just home, um, and that's the one that, that you get there. It's just a blank resource. If I click on it, you'll see that... Um, there's nothing in it, it's just blank. But you can see that there's several fields. There's an ID, there's users template, which you know you, you click on to select um, what template you want the particular resource to use. There's a title and, and several other fields, a long title description, and you can use this for different things. Resource alias, that if you're using friendly URLs, this is where you would enter the alias that you want to appear as the URL of the page. Um, link attributes, if you want to use them. And, and so on and so forth, whether you want the uh, resource to appear in the menu or not. And then this is where you put your resource content. So these are the default fields that come with your standard um, resource, your standard document or page, if, if you so wish to refer to it like that. And then you go on there and there's settings, you know, is it a container? Um, that, that means that are you going to put, are you going to give it children? All right, so, or is it just going to sit on its own? So for example, you might have, uh, let me see, um, a site where you have a listing of different products. And for example, your products are categorized into books, DVDs, and such. And so you may have books, and, and then under the books, you might have children where, you you know, the children documents, for example, are, um, you know, Oliver Twist. And the next one is developing sites with PHP and, and so on. And so your, your, your folder books would be you know, a container. I mean, your document, your resource books would be a container and so on. And so you, you can select whether you want it to be a container or not. It defaults to a container as soon as you add children to it. But there are other situations and, and we might run into them where you might want it to appear as a container even though it has no children and so on. But this is where you would set that stuff. Do you want it to use a rich text editor? Do you want to, here you can come and sort of 
um, play around with published dates and, and stuff like that. You know, you might want to delay publishing a document or you, you might want to backdate a document. You would change all those things in here. Is it searchable? And so on. And a lot of these things, a lot of times, you'll just sort of end up leaving them in their default values. But it's, it's good to know that that's there. Then we have template variables, and we're going to talk about those um, in more details. And access permissions, which determines um, if, if you have a site where, for example, only certain people can access certain pages or certain resources, then you would set your permissions in this tab on a document, I mean, on a resource by resource basis. Right, so that's um, this part here. And again, like I said, I'm just sort of running through it. As we work with it, you will um, learn a lot more about them. And, um, you know, there's little icons here, which you, if you hover over them, uh, tell you what they do. This one expands the tree, collapses the tree. So, for example, if I click that, you can only see the context, but not the document. If I click that, it expands and you can see the document as well. I mean, the resource as well. Um, this is to create a new web link, create a new document, create a new sim link, um, new static resource, refresh the tree, show sorting options, remove deleted resources. So you can just sort of hover over those icons and see what each of them is. So that's the resources tab. Then we have the elements tab. And elements are, they're just that, they're elements. They're not in themselves resources. They're not in themselves and by themselves front-facing elements. But they are, you know, bits and pieces that, that contribute to making your set what it is. So, for example, among the elements, we have templates. And templates, you would know from working with any kind of content management system or any, you know, sort of any web application. The template is what determines the layout and the structure and the appearance of your site. And, and this is the whole idea behind separating contact, content from presentation. Your template is your presentation and your resources contain your content. All right. So you have templates, you have template variables, which are elements that allow you to add custom fields to your resources. And, and template variables are powerful and we're going to use them and you will really see the power that they add to your site. Because you may have um, resources where you want to have really custom things going on, and these fields, these, these default fields, just don't cut it for you, and, and you can put in template variables. Additionally, with template variables, you can do special things like, like um, evaluating SQL statements and, and things like that. You can have drop-down elements. You can have um, you know, check boxes and things like that. You can add those sort of fields you know, you can have date fields. You can add all that kind of stuff to your resource. And so that's, that's what template variables are. And we have chunks. And chunks are um, pieces of HTML code. And they're great for putting in stuff that's going to get repeated in, in, in your, in your uh, templates. You know, for example, you may have, you know, your header. Your header looks the same on, on every template that you use in your site. And so instead of, you know, repeating that the the header in each template. You might have three or four templates on your site. Instead of repeating the header, just take that code and put it in a chunk. And all you need to do is call that chunk at the top of your of your templates and so on. Um, so chunks are great. Additionally, chunks are used for templating, for example, snippet outputs. For example, a snippet like Wayfinder, which we're going to look at, is a snippet that is used for creating it. it it works to create an ordered list, and therefore it's great for navigation and for menus. And so what, what Wayfinder will do is it will just spit out um, an unordered list. And, of course, you may have some styling and, and some way that you want to structure this unordered list. You may want to give it a particular ID or, you know, you may want the UL elements to have a particular ID and, and the active element to have a particular ID and stuff like that. And you can create little mini templates or TPLs as they're called that, that format your Wayfinder call. And so these will usually sit in chunks. And this is the case for different, um, different snippets. And additionally, you may have, you know, you may just want to put in some JavaScript somewhere, um, and you can use a chunk for that and things like that. Snippets, um, one more thing I should say about chunks is that they only hold HTML and, and basically and JavaScript and they can even hold CSS, but they cannot hold PHP code. All right, they can call snippets. You can call a snippet within a chunk and as you will see, snippets are PHP code. But a chunk in itself cannot hold raw PHP code. All right, snippets are PHP code. They are, um, you know, they're functional bits and pieces 
for example, Wayfinder, which I alluded to before, that creates an ordered list and therefore is good for menus and navigations. There's get resource and, and different different um, snippets that we will look at. You can also create your own custom PHP code to maybe add custom functionality that you haven't found in any snippet out there or you don't like what the snippets out there do and you want to do your own thing, you want to roll your own code, you can create your own snippets and they would appear basically in that section. And then plugins are things that sort of add functionality in the back end to the manager. And um, we're also going to see a few of these. I um, haven't really used a lot of plugins in Modex Revolution. But again, as we continue, I'm sure we're going to find more. And finally, this is just categories, which, you know, you can create categories to sort of put and organize your, your elements in. So, for example, I usually create uh, a category for main site templates. And so therefore, any templates that have to do just with, with um, just the website itself, any TPLs and chunks and template variables that have to do with just the templates will go in that category. Additionally, when you um, install some, some of the snippets um, like Quip and such, they will create their own categories for you to put stuff in. And so it's, it helps you keep your site organized. Finally, we have the files section. And this basically exposes the, uh, um, the, the files in your Modex setup. And when you're doing development, this is really handy because you can explore your files, you can look at them, you can upload files, and you can just sort of play around here. And, and once you're done developing your site and you're ready to hand it over, you can actually change this tree here to only expose what you want um, a content editor to be able to see so that they don't mess with these other files. And we're going to look at that as we go along. So that's the resource tree, and then that's just the basics of it. And we're going to be working in this area a lot, and trust me, you will be very comfortable with it before too long. All right, then up here we have um, some key items. We have site, and under site, there are different things, and there's small descriptions. Useful ones to know, view allows you to preview your site, opens it in a new window, so that's handy. If you've made some changes and you want to see what's going on, you can just come here and click view. Um, additionally, with each resource, I still have this resource open. Once you finish doing what you're doing, you can always click preview and it opens in a new window. All right. And a site, um, you can also come in here to create new documents, new web links, if you don't want to use these little um, icons here. And you can also remove locks. Um, you know, for example, if two people are editing a page, if somebody's editing the page and you go to edit it, you might find it's locked and you can remove the locks if you have the uh, proper access permissions and so on. And you can have a logout button here, but you also have a logout button there. So different ways to access different parts of the site. Security, this comes in handy. Um, again, if you've created different user roles and user permissions and stuff like that, things that we'll explore, a lot of stuff will come here. One um, thing that I can I can tell you you might find really handy, and we're going to look at um, screen custom, this is form customization, which allows you to sort of move things around and, and create and customize how you know things back here look when somebody goes to create a new resource. For example, you might want to move, oh, I don't know, all your template variables into the main resource area. And we're going to, I'm going to record a short screen custom how to do that. And, and so that's really handy. Um, flashing permissions and flashing sessions can be really handy sometimes just to sort of debug what's going on um, and to sort of give your site a fresh sort of boost if, if you're having things getting cached and you're wondering what's going on. Then there's tools, property sets, really handy. Um, you can create, when you create elements, you can assign property sets to them that dictate how those elements behave. Some elements and come with default property sets and you can create new property sets to override those. And again, this is probably going to sound, if you're not familiar with Modex, sounds like complete and utter Greek, don't worry. We're going to be, we're going to be exploring that um, more. There's import HTML, import resources, so different tools in there. Um, then we have reports uh, where you can look at what's going on with your site. You can look at your error log, really handy. If things are not working like you think they should, or you're sort of getting errors, nice to go into the error log and see what's going on, system information, and so on. Um, if you want to see what different managers have been doing or what the last few actions on your site 
have been you can click on manager actions and that shows you or you know um let's see let's just select all use success select mary and see what mary's been up to on the site um uh, should we select a date now let's just take a look and see and we really don't see anything but if if for example mary has been creating new resources editing resources went in deleted a chunk you can take a look there and it will list everything that um a particular manager user has been doing or all manager users have been doing all right, and then we have system, and this is, um, we're going to spend a bit of time here as well. We have package management, system settings, and so on. And in the um, next screencast, we're actually going to start here. We're going to look at system settings. We're going to set some system settings for our site. And we're also going to look at um, package management, and we're going to install some packages. Packages are your add-ons, um, your snippets and modules, I mean, plugins and stuff like that, add-ons that, that, that give more functionality to your site. We're going to find them here when we come to package management. And I, like I said, we'll do that in the next screencast. Lexicon management is language strings and, and, and just basic language stuff to do with, the web, uh, to do with um, your website. And we're going to look at that um, down the road, especially when we're working with things like format and we're setting up our recapture and things like that. That's going to come in really handy. Content types, um, you can uh, create your own content types. You can change the way different content types behave or what extensions are given to them. We're going to look at that and so on. And things like namespaces and context, this is a bit more advanced, but we'll definitely get to that. And finally, there's user, which is, you know, update your personal profile, view your messages. And support where you can launch and look at lo launch the Modex forums and the wiki, the documentation, and you can do that from the back end. So that's a basic, very basic overview of the Modex back end. Um, just to sort of give you an idea of, of what everything is. Like I said, it's not very detailed and it would be overwhelming if I went into details on each section. I think it makes more sense to learn it in context as you're using it and as you as different needs arise in your site building, you learn what the different things and the different settings are. But that's just a basic overview. So in the next screencast, we're going to come and explore this area here. We're going to look at system settings. We're going to set the system settings for our sandbox. We're also going to do some packages and, and install some packages. We're going to look at how you install add-ons onto Modex. And we're going to start building our website, start building our sandbox and lay the foundation for... Um, us to start learning how to use different snippets and how just to work with Modex. So thanks again for joining me and uh, remember to leave any comments or questions at the Modex Video Tutorials Forum. Just create an account, it's free and um, I'll see you there. All right, thank you.